out in the tomato garden and everyone likes to have a fresh red tomato fresh from the garden. It's the sweetest tomato you can get. It really beats the grocery store variety. Problem is, just about the time your tomatoes start to get ripe, the birds or the deer or the raccoons or possums or whatever, they also like these ripe tomatoes. So they come in just before you pick them and eat them. Nice tomato. If you want it, if you want it like this, whole and not happy. So there's an old uh, device called a mole chaser. And my dad had a mole chaser in his garden. And the idea was it's a wooden whirly gig and it would blow in the wind, spin in the wind, and make a, an irregular thumping or clicking or clacking noise. My dad just would have one with a wooden block here. And the wooden block would just hit the blades and clock, 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 clock. And hopefully this will keep uh, the deer. I saw the deer out here this morning. They were, they were sniffing around. So my tomatoes are just starting to ripen. They're orange and pretty soon they'll be red. So I want to keep those deer away. This is a variation of a theme. The idea being you'd stick them in the ground and they would have a uh, irregular noise that they would make every time the wind blows a little bit. And so I came up with this idea based on one of my wind turbines. Still have some of the details to work out. Okay, so now we're back in the shop. And I'm going to take the uh, basic idea of the wind turbine. I'm going to use a three-bladed hub. The wind turbine body has got this slant on it. And that I'm going to get rid of that. I've got some scrap wood. We can I could look around and try to find... The best so I've got this piece of uh, old 2x4 here I think I can cut a body out of that the reason this cutoffs in here is that it helps the back of the blade clear the body here see the little cutoff so the blade doesn't uh, hit that and stop as you can see here that works pretty good now on this uh, cam or whatever you want to call it I've rounded the front. I don't know if you can see that against the white background, but I've rounded it so that as the blade goes by, it won't hang up on there or catch, stop the blade. And also, this blade has about, has uh, maybe 3 16 eighth of an inch or 3 16 of play. So if, it's, if it starts to hang up on that clicker on the cam there, if it starts to hang up, it can slide forward and ride over it like that with this little play in the nail. Now I've used a number 10 brass wood screw for my uh, pivot on here. This could also be a nail. And also in, inside this pivot, I have put a little uh, brass bushing. And this washer is just hot glued on there. I'm going to take this apart first so I can trace around the turbine body to have a uh, starting point. So let's take this apart. I'll tell you what, if you don't have one of these uh, new lithium polymer drills and the bits here just clip in just like this, it's just so quick and easy. They have all kinds of drill bits so I have, I have an old uh, Jacob's Chuck. These are great. And you know, you, if you have a drill press or an older drill, you probably have one of these laying around. You could, you could just put this on the drill press and do the same thing. You don't have to take it apart. I'm, put, I'm putting it right over there. I'm going to tighten it on the screw head. Case, I'm just going to use it to, as a handle. You unscrew the, the screw. See that? Isn't that nice? It just gives you something to hold on to. And, uh, like I said, you could take it. This is a nail on this is a nail here. And if I want to take this apart, I can I can tighten this that drill chuck right on that nail. 
again, it mostly you have you almost have to have a, a key so you can really jam it tight on there. Then you can just wiggle that nail right out. And uh, if you need to put a new nail in or work on something, and you want to take it apart. Uh, some of these I make a lot of these and people want to buy them finished, so I just use a nail, a quick nail in there. That's a 16D, three and a half inch 16D nail. One of the problems with this, with my wind turbine is they don't pivot into the wind. Th these were designed to be held by hand and so you could just, uh, wherever you were, you could just turn them into the wind. And in addition, these wind turbines, when they're just sitting, like if you have them out in the yard or, in, uh, or mounted, they, they will go uh, from either direction. With the winds from the back or the front, of the, almost from the side, these go so easily that they're always turning. So I wasn't worried about like having a fin to guide these into the wind. On this uh, bird chaser, I'm going to consider, I probably will make, put a pivot on this and a fin of some sort and have it pivot into the wind so it will turn more often. Safety goggles. Just gonna trim this down. Now I'm, I'm going to take that little trim across the front so that the blades won't uh, hit the edge of the wood there. Putting out my, uh, my blades for the bird chaser. And I want them to be big. So I've got a piece of uh, old 2x4 here. This was part of a, a shipping pallet. Some doors or something came in it. And I saved them. It's nice and dry. It's light. It uh, looks like probably white pine or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to make them... These are 12 inches. Actually, yeah, 11 and a half, 12 inches on these. Actually, they measure 11 and a half. So, I want these to be big. 12 inches will give the diameter. It's almost a 24 inch diameter. So let's go with 12. Why not? 10 inch blade. And it's just, this thing, I've never seen a saw blow so much sawdust all over the place as this saw. Apparently there's a fan in the motor and this plastic case gets pressurized and it just blows, you'll be covered with sawdust. Your hair, your front of your shirt, everything in the shop gets covered. Just cut wood. So it's got that going for you. You know, you don't want your board to be wide on one end and thick, wide on one end, thin on the other. So I use this uh, extension. This is just two pieces of three quarter inch uh, plywood joined by a piece of wood that's the same width here, exact same width as this and one in the middle to hold it, and the one in the middle doesn't go all the way through because it just rests on the top of this. And that gives, when you run your board through, it gives it more area here to rest up against that's square. So you get a more even cut. You make sure this that your blade is parallel to this surface. So when you slide it in there, you get a nice even cut. Another thing in this Harbor Freight uh, bench table saw, the rip fence slides. When you, as you, when you do one piece, it slides out. So you have to keep readjusting. And if you tighten it, there's a, an adjustment screw here to tighten it. If you tighten this screw down too much that you need, where you need it, it just bends the little bracket. It bend, The bracket's made out of just pressed, soft pressed metal, so it just bends it. And then you, there's no way to get it tight enough to really hold. 
So that's why I came up with another video when I have the stop blocks here for cutting thin pieces. Just adjust that in a little bit. Why you, you never want to stand directly uh, in line with the blade because it can throw stuff out at you. I mean, this does come out very fast, but if it's smaller, it can really shoot out and uh, give you a, a painful injury. So never stand in front of the blade. This one came out pretty good. The fence, even though it's locked, it pushed, it pushed way out. It's just terrible. So now I've got the blades cut out and I've chosen the small diameter three bladed uh, hubs made of poplar. I have some of these uh, already cut out so I'm going to use these. It seems like a reasonable length. I mean the originals were 11 and a half so these are going to be big. So now I've got to fit these. Uh, the thickness was a little thick on some of these. So I've got to sand them down so they all are evenly uh, thick, the same thickness, so they won't be, I won't have a heavy blade. So I've got this belt sander here. I bought this belt sander at a yard sale. A uh, guy was kind of a woodworker. He made all kinds of uh, picture frames and things. So I bought this Delta belt sander. I think it was like 25 bucks and... You no, know, it's not new, but it works good. And then I've got hooked to it here, just to show you this hookup. Got the shop back. I just drilled a hole in a in a piece of scrap wood with one of my door hole saws. And then I've got a uh, two-inch PVC pipe on the end of the shop back hose. Kind of holds it in there. I just turn that on, and it catches the sand. This is the uh, sawdust. All right, these look pretty good for the three bladers. See how they fit. Nice and tight on that one. Alright, pretty good. I like that. So now we're gonna have to see how that fits on the uh, the body. And you can see this uh, cutout here. I made a 45 on that. You can see when the blades come by, they're going to hit. They're going to hit the. Uh, they're going to hit the body there. So I might have to like trim these a little bit right there where they come by. Hmm. So see how that works out breezy today so I'll go out and see if these this is gonna work making progress